Welcome to K21 Academy. In this video, our expert will be discussing perimeter level security in IT infrastructure with a focus on firewall and DDoS protection. He will discuss the roles of each component, types of DDoS attacks, and difference between DDoS and firewall, and pricing for both if using this service in Azure. Using real world examples for Azure DDoS protection, providing insights into firewall configuration and network security group. Join us as we break down the complexities of cyber security and offer practical strategies to strengthen your organization's defense. Also, stay till the end for a free class video if you want a high paying job in Azure Cloud by our very own Atul Kumar. Let's get started. Now, guys, here when we talk about perimeter level of the security, right, you know that your firewall is trying to protect your network only, right? Your DDoS protection also try to protect your public IPs. But the thing is, why we have given the separate category for the DDoS protection and the firewall? That needs to be checked. Now, when we say DDoS protection, what kind of the attack of the DDoS protection is? Let's say when you create any particular load balancer for an example or let's say any particular web application you definitely want end user to access your application right now let's say uh, if you're creating that particular accessibility from the end user side anybody can access it so basically it is more prone towards the hacking as well right now when we talk about hacking not every time people are trying to hack to your account not that is the intention all the time there might be the intention that what they are trying to do, that they are trying to consume the bandwidth of your resource. I'll give you an example, guys. Let's say I'm calling on your cell phone 24 by 7 continuously. Will anybody else will be able to reach out to you guys at that point of time? Definitely okay. not. It will be engaged, right? Now, in the similar situation, if your web application, let's say you created an XYZ.com resolving on a public IP of a load balancer. Now, if continuously somebody, you know, hitting on that particular web application, and increasing the amount of the traffic on your web application, definitely the genuine user will start facing some amount of the latency. So if the requests are very high, what will happen? Guys, have you tried to file the tax on the last day of the taxation date? Or do you remember those days, guys, when we in the colleges try to check the results? And, you know, if the server are getting too much of the request from the student just to load that particular result page, what happened, guys? We used to wait, right? This happens. So, guys, this kind of a attack usually are not meant to steal the data or any sort of the hacking. They are just trying to demolish the reputation of your web application that most of the customers start complaining that your web application don't function and it is sluggish or nearly non-responsive. So to avoid such kind of the challenges, definitely you require an additional mechanism. The reason is the phone example that I gave you, if you know the number that, okay, if it is a same number from which the call is coming, you can block that. Similarly, if a same IP, which is continuously generating the traffic for you, that, okay, the request from this particular location from this IP is continuously increasing the request, you can probably block that. But nowadays what hacker does, they have the access to the botnet. What they do, they create a user on the basis of that a new IP will be generated and continuously they will be changing the IPs. They might be creating an algorithm in the background and they run that particular script and that algorithm has the logic to continuously change that particular IP and they will continue to hit on your web application. So it's a similar way that if you are getting too many spam calls from different numbers, now it is basically difficult to dodge those kind of a thing. So to avoid that, you require an artificial intelligence mechanism. Now, that artificial intelligence mechanism is something that you have a DDoS protection plan. You have to purchase a plan. Basic DDoS protection is free of cost. So for an example, if you go to the virtual network, and let's say if you try to go into the virtual network security, you will find you do have the DDoS option available. So let's say if I will create a network over here and while creating the network, if I will be going over here, let's say in the security. Now in the security, you have something called Azure DDoS network protection over here. And you can see enable the DDoS network plan. For basic guys, you don't have to take any additional step over here. For standard, then you have to create a plan and associate it. So for that, what you can do, you can go to all services. You can look for the DDoS. 
and in the ddos protection plan you are getting now guys your ddos protection plan is slightly expensive how much microsoft is going to charge you for the ddos protection over here so the cost of the ddos protection will be 2943.55 usd this much is the per month cost for protecting 100 ips guys 100 public ips in a network if you have you can go for this particular plan however you also have a plan for ip protection let's say i don't have that many ips to protect i only want to protect a specific public ips if that is the case you can pick that how many public ips you are trying to protect so basically in that particular scenario in order to evaluate the costing impact you can go to azure.com and in azure.com you have the option available pricing pricing calculator and in pricing calculator you have this option available let's say networking within the networking i am going with azure ddos protection over here add so over here when you are trying to add it is only showing for the standard because basic is free of cost so let's say if i will go to the network protection you can see the cost is showing 2943.55 usd for per 100 public ips also some additional factor that additional public ips you will add let's say i am adding another 100 ips over here the cost will be doubled but let's say i only want to protect five public ips over here why i need to go for entire network protection i can go for ip protection and i can mention that i would like to protect only five ips so now you can see the cost is 9900 and sorry 9000 sorry 994.99 approximately 1000 dollars you are spending to protect five ips but guys this is slightly expensive right you can see if you have more than 10 to 15 ips to protect better to go with a network protection plan reason being here if i will be protecting 15 ips you can see the cost is near about same you're getting my point so we can go for a bigger plan in that particular part so if you want to go for a bulk protection that will be cheaper but if you don't have that you think that you know i'm not going to go for more than 4 ips 5 ips in that particular case you can save considerable amount of the money but if you see the per ip ratio with Three thousand dollars if you are protecting hundred IPs, and over here with fifteen itself, the cost is going way more than that. So that you have to just think about if, in case you are seeing that you know there will be more number of the IPs in near future, better to go with network plan. Are you getting my point? Firewall. When you are talking about a firewall, right? Firewall is there to inspect the packet before the traffic is reaching over here, but the DDoS is protecting that traffic which is not meant to be handled. Are you getting my point? let's say you are in the bank for an example right and you are one of the employee in the bank now there is a customer which is continuously coming right and you know having those kind of the issues right that bank cannot solve right there are other customers mm -hmm. waiting in line so that particular customer will keep you engaged each and every occasion that you won't be able to assess the other customers so what is the solution where the firewall protection will be able to start over here firewall means that anything which supposed to reach to your web application their job is start that we need to make sure something which is trying to reach has to inspect just like your security right at the airport security when you pass they will continuously checks right at the security that you are not going to pass the gate without uh, you know any sort of the things like probably you cannot carry the power bank right so it will go ahead and check that okay everything supposed to be inspected correctly and then you will be pass through that particular thing same happen with the data packet but let's say the person doesn't have the flight ticket do you need to inspect that particular person it's supposed to be rejected at the first gate right it's supposed to not reach to the security security mm -hmm. supposed to check and verify the data or any sort of the traffic which is legit anything which is not legit it has to be blocked at the first end you got you are getting my point as i mentioned right over here it is not to harm you from the security perspective they are trying to consume the bandwidth so the intention of the hacker is just to degrade the reputation of the web application clear that let's say you are yeah. running a banking firm and if there will be reviews from the customer that this banking firm website doesn't work in a proper manner right or let's say always the services won't be available right you can understand it will not take much time for the people to switch to the other bank so you need to make sure that whomsoever is reaching to the website the request has to be legit 
otherwise if it is not legit there is no point investing time and money for the security of that particular thing clear so firewall will come later i mean later means that on the basis of the packet inspection and those kind of the mechanisms clear right so firewall is divided into like basic standard and premium basic we hardly use because over there we don't get much of the securities what do you think that what can be the additional requirement that firewall will be helping you achieve see also let's say you have a network let's assume right in your network you have two subnets now i only want to protect one subnet through the firewall not the other subnet can i not do that i can so basically if i need to create any particular protection through the firewall i need to also mention that which specific subnet i would like to protect so the statement that you know that firewall will be protecting a network that is fine but when you start protecting the network it will always help you creating the rules on the basis of the subnet or on the basis of the resource never on the basis of the network same goes with the nsg as well where you implement nsg guys at a subnet yep. or nic level yeah and where you end up protecting with the help of the firewall you need to tell right which traffic is going where that you are trying to protect basically so those rules that you will be creating as well see guys in nutshell the common trade is your firewall and your network security group both will be helping us protecting inbound and outbound traffic right at the end of the day what you are trying to protect inbound and outbound traffic but where in which layer i'll give you an example guys let's say if you need to block a website traffic let's say i don't want somebody to open facebook.com and instagram in my organization in my organization network how you will block this through the nsg can we do that through nsg guys what nsg does five double hash right source port source ip destination port destination ip and on the basis of protocol right so Correct. if i'm saying source ip do we know what ip facebook is using how we will protect them dns right but nsg doesn't work on the dns got the difference facebook.com in the background guys do you think facebook.com in the background only using one public ip not the case right or let's take a website called youtube do you think youtube will be using only one public ip in the background there will be hundreds of them right because let's say youtube and the facebook are the website who will have billions of the user and over here they might have created multiple sites in order to provide that particular facility in different part of the world so basically whenever we are talking about the resolution of their dns it can be any public ip so guys even if you know the public ip there is no guarantee you will be able to block it with the help of the nsg so what you need to block you need to block the entire domain now when you type xyz.com guys where exactly the traffic hits on the application layer so right. when we talk about traffic at layer 7 where it is hitting guys it is hitting on your application layer right yes. so you required a protection which can deal with the security at the application layer first nsg is fine but nsg doesn't deal with the application layer nsg just deal with your layer 3 and layer 4 that is your network layer and your transport layer in azure network layer is taken care by your provider right so mostly what we need to deal with the transport layer security that is layer 4 this is what your nsg is dealing with nsg cannot protect you at the layer 7 clear because when we are targeting any particular domain traffic the traffic comes with good amount of the data as well you required a packet inspection mechanism over here you required a network address translation rule to be created that a public ip can resolve in the background on the private ip as well all this particular mechanism is the part of your enhanced security with the premium firewall you are getting the protection of intrusion protection and detection as well detection means that microsoft will detect that if the even if you have created a allow rule and if the firewall detects anything suspicious firewall will block the traffic and she can't do that if you have created the allow rule doesn't matter your account is hacked if it is allowed it is fine but with the firewall right if any thing which is suspicious that somebody is sending any particular data packet with some trojan keeping inside the data or any particular script inside the data firewall will will inspect and block that i'll give you an example guys in your organization when you somebody sends that email it will take less time to reach out to you or more time why because that email as well whatever information is getting sent before it will be reaching to your mailbox or in your outlook right if it is that is in your organization network it will be inspecting the entire packets and then you will be getting that information so that is the reason guys 
So over here, when we talk about a firewall, right, you can include what all mechanism that firewall can have over here is that first thing first, firewall will be helping you at layer seven traffic protection, or you can call it application layer. You can create an application rule for that as well. Network rule, guys. Now, let's say you have created a website xyz.com and in the background, you have created two sites, front end tier, middle tier and database tier for one application and the another application is in another region. But the application URL is same, xyz.com. So in the background, basically, that application is resolving on two IPs, two public IPs, yes or no? Let's take this example, guys. Let's say you have three tier architecture over here. You have three tier architecture over here, right? But let's say if you want to manage this particular traffic with the help of the common firewall, for an example, let's say. Let's say you have one three tier architecture available over here. You have another three tier architecture available over here. You have a network, you have a subnet, and here you have deployed your firewall. Now this firewall is connected with two different sites or two different network over here. Now the thing is xyz.com traffic. Let's say this is your website xyz.com getting resolved where with the help of the DNS on the public IP of the firewall. And in the background, the traffic can reach to any site. Maybe your first site is in the East US. Maybe the second site in the West US region. For an example, so when the traffic hits over here and the traffic can reach over here, let's say if you need to create a rule that if the traffic is coming from XYZ range of the public IPs, the traffic can be reached only to this site, not to this site. Or if XYZ traffic is coming from a particular other location, it's supposed to reach to this particular location. How you can create it? You can only create this if you can configure the rule that even the traffic will be reaching to your application rail, you also have the control that where this public IP will be translating the traffic. Making sense? So over here, whenever we talk about this kind of the mechanism, right, it required the control on the network layer that DNS will be dissolving. You required a DNS forwarded that I want this particular DNS to be forwarded to some other location, to some other IP. You can also create a network rule for that. If you want to translate this particular IP from a public IP to the private IP, you can create a NAT rule. That is your network address translation. That after traffic reaches to the firewall, I want this particular traffic to further reaching to the load balancer on the private IP. What is the source? End user. What is the destination? Firewall. Where the traffic is reaching? To the load balancer. So what is that? Translation. If you are the end user, you are hitting xyz.com, where the traffic will end? On the firewall, right? Without that, how you are even reaching to this particular application? Let's say you are the designer of a banking application, right? Do you want your customers directly to hit their traffic to your bank website without packet inspection? You require always security on the front side, right? I should not be, when you're boarding a flight, right? People are not being checked within the flight. It's supposed to be done before somebody is boarding the flight, right? The end goal is to board the flight. Right. But the thing is, let's say you came out from your home, right? Home was the source from where you started your journey. Where was the destination? Your airport. Clear. Yeah. And at the airport, what do you require? You require a security. Just take an example. So your security check happens oh. before you board the flight, before you reach to your actual and goal over here. So here the destination is your firewall because from okay. you, this is your destination. But from here, further mechanism is required that is your translation. So you must have seen that before the security check, right? They must have created multiple routes that which gate you will be loading. So which gate you will be going over here to do, solve what kind of a purpose? You can create a firewall rule and you can send that range A to B will be reaching to this particular gate or range from B to C will be reaching to this particular gate, clear? So all this thing happening where? Firewall. Well, that was our expert and thank you so much for staying with us till the end of the video. Now all you have to do is just click the link in the description below or if you are just starting out, just type k21academy.com slash azure02. Now all you have to do is just enter your name, enter email ID, enter phone number 
and click on register now and you will be redirected to this page you can also add this to your google calendar or apple calendar and i promise this is something that you don't want to miss so go ahead click on the link and step into the world where learning knows no boundaries till then keep enjoying i'll see you in the next video